This little pouch here has one of my favorite pieces of filmmaking gear. Let's take a look. Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Robin. I'm a filmmaker and photographer based on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. And today I want to talk to you about this. This is the Polar Pro Pivot shoulder mount. When I started reinvesting into filmmaking gear last year, one of the main thing I wanted was a good shoulder mount. I've always liked the look you get from a camera mounted on the shoulder. It is first of all eye level with your subjects and being on the shoulder it removes all of the micro gear you would get on handheld. And on top of that, before you had gimbals and steady cams, a shoulder mount was one of the only way for filmmakers to get right into the actions if they wanted to step away from the static tripod. I used a variety of shoulder mounts in the past, and the two things I always remember from those was, first of all, they were very uncomfortable, and even if I wanted to buy one, most of the time were very expensive. So when I was on the hunt for a good shoulder mount last summer, I looked at different brands, Small Rig, Chilta, Condor Blue and Polar Pro. The smaller rig one was kind of small uh, and you need to add extra piece to make it a worse while shoulder mount. The Tilta one was good, so I kept it in mind. And then my two favorite ones were the Condor Blue and the Polar Pro. What made me decide was that the Polar Pro was available, whereas the Condor Blue was on pre-order. So that's one another thing why I chose the Polar Pro over the Condor Blue. What struck me about the Polar Pro was the design. It's not something I had seen before. And um, as you can see right now, it's fully foldable. It has a very small footprint and it's perfect to strap on the side of a backpack. And that was the idea behind the pivot. Polar Pro designed the shoulder mount for, and I quote, run and gun filmmakers. It is extremely lightweight, but rugged. Uh, I believe it weighs under four pounds or two kilograms. And like I said, the main thing is that it, it's foldable. So you put that on the side of a bag or below and you won't even feel the weight too much. So you can, take this basically anywhere you want in the mountains. Most of their marketing for this was actually made in the mountains to show how easy it is to pack and to bring into the back country with you. Another great thing about this shoulder mount is the fact that it's instant setup. You just click the button and you suddenly have your shoulder mount mounted tool free. So you don't need any type of tools to set it up. And uh, because it uses the same um, lens support, like universal lens support, you can add additional accessories to it or swap some of them. I'll just show you now how fast it is to set up. One, two, three. And there you have it. The pivot can accommodate different type of cameras and shooting styles. So for instance, if you want your camera forward to be able to see the back of the screen, you can. You can also move it backwards if the camera is heavier and you want more of the weight uh, on your shoulder. And everything on this mount was designed to be fast and easy to use. We'll start by the handles. The great thing about the handles is about the push of a button. You can just change the angle. You do have, a, I believe, a quarter inch on the bottom of each of those handles to mount uh, additional accessories. But the main one is hidden between this little wheel here. By unscrewing it, I can reveal a Ari rosette mount. And you have one on each side of those handles. So those are great if you wanted to mount maybe an additional handles or a full focus, for example. Moving on for the base of the shoulder mount, you have those two carbon fiber rods. They're fairly long, you know, for most users, it would be enough. However, if you want to have them longer, you can actually buy small extensions from Polar Pro website by removing the back knob here, and then you can add an extension each. However, this won't work with current extension you may have from small rig or tilta, for example. So that would have been nice if you could just get your own extension, but you can't. The one issue I have with those though is that my package arrived damaged and uh, the front knob here is, is fully stuck and I cannot remove it. So my guess is it has been damaged during the shipment. I didn't have time to send it back to Polar Pro because I needed to use this short amount the next week. So I kept it, um, but that would have been nice if it wasn't broken. <laughs> next, we have the base that actually has a camera. Um, this is actually an add-on I made. I made a Arca Swiss to work with my camera, um, but it comes included with a standard Manfrotto plates. Uh, and you can actually add other type of plates here. Most of them are compatible. Uh, and on their website, they do have a list of all of the plates that are compatible and incompatible. The base here is great. There is on the other side, there is actually another level here, lever, sorry, and then you can actually raise the base if uh, the camera is too small and you need to accommodate for some accessories here, for instance. Uh, this is kind of useful, although with my camera, I always keep it down, but that's something that you might be using. And finally, you can also detach the base from the shoulder pad, let's say if you have a very small mirrorless camera that you like to put forward, uh, you can actually do that by, I believe, 
you need to like release those two things here and by sliding it off. And suddenly you can have your camera here and maybe another piece of weight in the back if you really want to be able to see the back of your mirrorless camera. I usually leave it all the way down or like slightly up. And as you can see, you can basically lock it anywhere you want. So this is really useful depending on how big your camera is or how small. You can basically put it anywhere you like. And that's also great when to have like the weight uh, perfectly distributed on your shoulder. And finally, we have the shoulder piece here. And this is where the pad is. So technically, this should be on your shoulder. It is a fairly comfortable pad, but not the most comfortable I had. And uh, I almost never use it in that way because what I really like about this shoulder mount is the 90 degree angle. So there is a lock here. It's only two positions, actually three folded, 90 degrees, and you can fully extend it if you like. So you only have those three positions. So there are no in-between positions. So that can be an issue for some people. I really like the idea of the 90 degree angles because once I put it, it actually lock behind my shoulder. And by extending these two handles, I can actually create some tensions between the back and the front. Not only it adds tension, which is great, but it can also be used between takes if you want to rest a little bit and you don't want to remove the camera from your shoulders by just like sliding it down like this. It is still fairly comfortable with the, the camera. I'll show you later on. Um, and that's another great feature I like about it. And this is my camera mounted on the Polar Pro Pivot shoulder mount. This is the Canon R5C. I use a similar rig than my Stunner rig. I made a previous video about it. And I had to add a couple of pieces on the shoulder mount, the pivot, so I could accommodate some specific accessories. Let's start with the monitor. Since I'm right-handed, I have the monitor on the left. It's uh, linked to the shoulder mount by a rosette extension arm. Then I use a magic arm that I can change the angles depending on uh, how I need to shoot. And um, it also used the same arc lock system, so I can quickly remove the monitor and add it on top of the camera, let's say if I change and I go back on the tripod. And it's used the same on the other side of the magic arm. It is both arc lock on each side, so I can also use take fully the take the arm fully out. And it's just it's very simple, it's very quick. I really like the arc lock system. And then we have the monitor. This is a very basic, uh, affordable Field World 7-inch monitor. Not the brightest. Uh, but I can use shade on when I'm outdoor. And I bought this meter solely for using with the shoulder mount. It's connected through HDMI. I use a right, and right angle HDMI. So the cable, it's a coiled cable that's neatly arranged behind the monitors. And it runs alongside uh, the, the pole here. And then I have the same uh, HDMI to micro HDMI adapter because the R5C uses micro HDMI. As stated earlier, I mounted an Arca Swiss plate on the Manfro plate that came with the shoulder mount because I'm using Arca Swiss plates throughout my system. And the last piece I had it was on the back, so I'll. I'll this is a small rig V mount plate, and I have the V mount in the back behind the, the shoulder pad. The reason why I wanted that down is that it acts as a counterweight for the camera. It works very well, and again, I have a cold cable, USB-C to USB-C, plug on the left of the camera, and it's plugged on top of here. This works very, very well outdoors. Uh, the only thing I sometimes have to change is that I have to add a little plastic cover here when it rains, and it does rain quite a lot here on the Pacific Northwest. Since the Pivot used the universal lens support system, I mounted my full focus to the right of the camera. It's generally on the left, but I found it much easier to use on the shoulders when it's to my right. The easiest way to interact with your shoulder mount is to have an handle on top of your camera. This is by far the easiest way to put the camera on your shoulder and off. By just grabbing it here, and then you can just bring it here on your shoulder where it's comfortable. And I usually have the handles extended all the way, as it is a bit more comfortable for me. And here I have the shooting, and then the screen here can be like just readjusted depending on how I shoot. I usually have my left hand on the handles here, and I can have my right hand on the follow focus here if I'm not using autofocus. The other great thing I mentioned earlier about that 90 degree shoulder mount is that I can comfortably rest the camera on me, and I don't need to all the time remove the camera. Just by holding it here, it is very comfortable to hold in between takes, for example. Finally, when shooting with a shoulder mount, it is very important to keep your back straight. Uh, most shoulder mount tends to make you arc you back and bring your heads backwards like this, and this kind of brings you the most pain into your neck, into your back. I also use this shoulder mount with my Blackmagic 6K Pro, but you can actually mount a bigger camera, such as a RED, for instance. I will also sometimes use the pivot as a base for a rig if I need my other parts to fit on my Blackmagic 6K Pro at the same time. 
the base here actually has a mine for plates that you can slide on the tripod. And it is so easy to remove the top handles and the shoulder mount that the pivot makes a great base for any type of rig. And I can swap the rods for longer or shorter depending on my needs, since all of those pieces will fit on different rods. Like I said, what I like the most about this shoulder mount is how easy it is to pack and to strap on the side of a bag. It's also tool-free, so you don't need Allen keys or screwdrivers to mount the camera and to use the shoulder mount. The second thing I like is the moderate of that mount. As you saw, I was able to mount my uh, full focus. You can also mount a lens support or a matte box support. And you can also swap pieces if you want a different type of handle, for example. So this system can be made on your own. You don't have necessarily to use the piece of the Polar Pro. So although you can swap pieces, like I said, and you can also swap the rods, there is a bit of a catch. Um, I feel like the rods are like smaller diameters than generic rods. So whenever I want to place other rods, this piece won't fully lock. You actually have to use an Allen key to be able to tighten the pieces so they fit another rod. I think it was made on purpose by Polar Pro, so you have to use a rod. But keep in mind that with the correct Allen key, you can actually tighten each of those pieces to fit other rods. The base will accommodate for different type of plate. However, it won't fully work with this plate I have. This is a small rig made for the RS2, so you can actually put dedicated Arca Swiss. I use those plates everywhere on my Manfrotto tripods, on my gimbal, obviously, and I can slide it in, but then this little lever here won't fully lock. And obviously you want it to be fully locked when you put a camera in. So I have to use an Allen key to loosen it in and then I can actually fully lock it in. So that's another thing I wish you could do without a tool. The third thing I wish was different on the pivot was when used in these like 90 degree positions, there is no padding below. So over time, that's gonna be like not the most comfortable on the shoulder because the pad is on the back. Uh, I'm planning to maybe add some Velcro here and add some a better pad that I can remove when needed. That being said, if you use any other sort of like counterweight accessories, such as a rigid V-mount, for instance, you could technically fold that back and use the provided cushion. And lastly, like I said earlier, if you need to extend the shoulder mount, you actually have to purchase from Polar Pro the extension for the rods. Any type of other extension rods won't work with this. Overall, I'm really happy with the Polar Pro Pivot. It is a great shoulder mount. The fact that I can just fold it and put it on the side of a bag, this is a must for me. It is very comfortable, and there are a couple of things that could be changed, obviously. As you can see here, it says edition one. I have the 246 out of 500 units. My guess is that they're actually working on an edition two. So it's something to keep in mind if you would like to purchase this mount. All right, that's it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, please consider liking and subscribing so I can do more of those videos in the future. See you next time.